So it seems I appear to just be picking and choosing video productions based off of great usernames, as today is no different, as we will talk about stagehands per Madland Moose Boy suggestion here. But we won't just discuss the stagehand, however, as the end tables that will come with them are quite handy little buggers, also could be quite lovely as well. So. Let's get to it. And as to where stagehands spawn, there is no real definitive answer. They can be in just about every biome depending on the location of our brick roads. As yes, in my experience, stagehands are just off the path when walking these stones. I cannot promise you which direction they'll be in, or even if your world will have a stagehand to begin with actually, as even though it is very, very rare, it is entirely possible for them to not spawn at all. And how do I know this? Well, because it happened to me filming this video twice. At first glance, it will seem like stagehands ain't got nothing going on, as they'll just sit there doing nothing while surrounded by five thorny roses. But add a little flame to the mix and things start to get interesting. The stagehand will appear to conjure up its own shadowy hand to put itself out. However, not much will come out of that. But as Wirt and many other survivors will say, something devious is happening here and by golly they're right so say hello to the stage hand everybody it is some sort of shadowy being with spider-like appendages that could truly be the absolute stuff of nightmares super creepy but now the stage hand seeks out light however contrary to what many believe this is not entirely true actually Stagehands will not just follow any source of light, like from maybe the miner's hat or lantern, for example. They actually are only attracted to light sources produced by fire. So torches and campfires may be your ally against the darkness, but they will not save you from this jump-scaring beast. The stagehand will always stick closest to the nearest source of fire come nightfall. So be prepared with some extra sets of underwear when needed, or just leave it at a campfire and run away from this thing. Nah, no need actually, because the stagehand truly only exists to give us nighttime frights, as they will do nothing more to us. But that being said, they can do something more for us, and to do so, we will need to hammer the sucker 86 times in order to receive a very special blueprint. And no, this is not me being overly dramatic, we actually do need to hammer the stagehand 86 times, and if you interrupt that hammer streak for too long, you will have to restart the entire process from the beginning, so yikes. But that blueprint in question will be for the end table, a player crafted structure that looks exactly like the stagehand, however is actually destructible, so be mindful there. But the applications for these are quite unique, so let's discuss. We are able to plant petals, ferns, light bulbs, and even glow berries within these end tables to not only add some lovely flair to our bases, but to enjoy a five sanity gain per one planted to boot. Furthermore, the light bulbs and glow berries will be providing light. So depending on your placement of these tables, you could potentially light up your base very nicely. But do note though, that all things planted within in end tables only last for two days. Now, if you've been around a while, chances are you've seen me use end tables to block various mobs for various reasons. And while they remain viable for doing so, there are things you should know. Because for one thing, blocking Berger is way off the table, as it is extremely difficult to contain that fluffy giant. However, even Deerclops will get a little finicky at times, as the moment he de-aggros off of you will be the moment he aggros on the nearest structures, aka your end tables. So your choices are threefold in my opinion. Use end tables on big bats like Moose Goose and Clops, but know that Clops will need some special attention. We can use fossils as an alternative, as only Claws and Berger can break through these. Or just don't bother with end tables on any of the big bats beyond Moosey, as that's not really what they're for. Yes indeed, end tables are miracle workers against mobs like Pigmen, 
Werepigs, hounds, vargs, spiders, tall birds, beeflo, you name it, folks. Small to medium bads are incapable of passing through end tables without a little glitchy help now and then, of course. So they are perfect for hound or tall bird fortress farming, the moonstone event as seen here, pigmen farms, etc. If you need to keep the heat off your back or keep things away from important stuff, end tables for the win. So try them out and see what applications work for you. But one last mention before we wrap here, since the actual stagehand is indestructible, some players use it to their advantage by painstakingly placing it near another indestructible object, the loot stash. There are quote unquote pro players out there who believe this incredibly viable and even a better strat than most others. However, I for one think it's an absolute waste of time and way too tedious to accomplish, especially for folks still learning how to to deal with these big bads. So I do not recommend this to anyone actually. However, I have discovered now that Berger can actually hammer the stage hand for us with his newly reintroduced, mind you, charge attack, which is pretty funny actually. So there you have it everyone, a guide long overdue centered on the stage hand and don't starve together. It is a fun yet frightening little portion of the game that could potentially lead to some massive applications and maybe we'll even give you some fun along the way. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.